the, the question I have for you tonight, Pastor, is um, when you go back in time and, and you um, you look about the, the 25 years that you've been doing this thing, coming from a lawless and a sinful lifestyle, and at what point did you know um, that you were chosen to bring forth this word of truth, and how was your transition experience spiritually? It wasn't until probably about uh, maybe three years, three years after, um, and believe you me, um, you know, I've always stayed humble. Uh, I've always respected my elders uh, and those over me. Um, of course, you know, you learn that discipline in the military too because of the rank structure, but um, uh, I wasn't looking uh, to ever be a pastor. Um, I wasn't ever. Wasn't even thinking about it. I was just excited and elated and happy just to attend assembly, go to church. And um, next thing you know, I had um, these bishops. It was Bishop Mulberry, Bishop Kelly, um, and another bishop in another providence down there in Louisiana when they all came together along with some elders and stuff. And um, they'd had these meetings. Um, and, and um, they just recognized the gift that was in me. They saw something in me that I didn't even realize because I'm too young. I'm young in the spirit. I don't know nothing about the workings of the Holy Spirit. All I'm doing is doing what y'all says. And they would recognize me. And they, they could tell that I was different. I had a different spirit in me than anyone else. Um, and, and I think that... Um, and, you know, and I just start, you know, um, obeying, you know, I, I did exactly what the book said do and, and stepped out on the water. Um, it wasn't until probably four years that after I had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, that I actually started really, truly living the thing far as, you know, um, obeying the voice. Uh, quit my job. I had an understanding of what the book of Acts said. Um, and, and just really stepped out on the water and stuff to see exactly what y'all's going to do. Because it's one thing to tell people all day long. Uh, hey, you know, um, you know, I had this vision, I had this dream. And, uh, and I told the elders about the vision and dream. And uh, they said, okay. And I said, all right. See you later. Bye. And I took off. God bless. Y'all bless. That's why I said, you know, God bless at the time. I didn't think nothing about it. And um, little did I know that the Father was showing me something. I didn't know because I just didn't know. I was ignorant. I just didn't know. You understand what I mean? Yeah. And um, yes, sir. I, I'd, I'd heal people. Um, I see somebody sick. Um, I see somebody um, that would probably, you know, just broke their ankle. Um, on crutches or something like that, I walk up to him and ask him if you do, if, do you if it's okay if I pray for you. Uh, can I lay hands on you? Yeah, I lay hands on him. Next thing you know, brother, they they throw the crutches down, and start walking. Go go to the doctor, man. It's in the military. Go to the doctor, man. And have to have to cast off the next day, man, because they've been totally healed out they had X-ray. I mean, I had all kind of stuff going on with me. I remember one service. Wow. Um, I was in church service and I was just Brother Dow. That's all it was, Brother Dow. And uh, in the Apostolic Church, they was having the Holy Spirit service, asking people who want to receive the Holy Spirit. And they come on up. They was going through the regular old prayer line. Nobody was receiving the Holy Spirit. I, I just went over to the prayer line, started laying hands on people in the name of Jesus, received the Holy Spirit. Every single person I laid hands on, including wow. children, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, started speaking in tongues right on the spot. Um, I preached at a, I preached at a, um, a tent meeting in Walterboro, South Carolina, where a thousand people were there. I probably preached every bit of three, four minutes. The Holy Spirit fell on the whole entire tent, and everybody in the tent got filled with the Holy Spirit. Everybody. Matter of fact, that's where Elder Doug got filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't even know Elder Doug. Elder Doug was at that meeting. And he had got filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit in that tent meeting. And I never even knew Elder Doug then. So, um, you know, it's just many, many things I've done um, that the fathers confirmed. And But not only that, more than anything, he had 
old men. I mean old men in their 60s. Old men who had already been walking this thing 20 and 30 years, been filled with the Holy Spirit. They laid hands on me. And they anointed me. Mm. Sure did. Wow. And I've been walking wow. in this way ever since. They anointed and ordained me. And I'm wow. talking about um, coming from an apostolic background that kept the commandments. That we kept the Sabbath day and the feast days. And that is highly unusual in this generation. Yes, sir. Well, hallelujah. You know what you're saying, you know, Pastor, because I know you probably was experiencing that probably at a, at a, um, at a young age, probably in your mid-20s, right? Yes. Wow, hallelujah. Well, that's all I got for you, Pastor. Um, you know, I, I thank you again. And, um, you, know, um, I, you know, we've been truly blessed over here. The most I've been blessing us. Uh-oh, look at him looking.